Hey everyone, I'm Bill. I'm with Calimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel. And yes, that is a 2020 Ducati Multistrada Enduro 1260. Ducati reached out to us a couple weeks ago and asked us if we wanted to take this bike and I didn't have any hesitation to say yes. So they gave it to us for a couple weeks to do a couple reviews for you guys. So we wanted to do a couple handful of reviews. We wanted to do an instrument cluster review, so make sure you stay tuned for that. We wanted to do a two-up review, stay tuned for that. We want to do a, definitely an enduro review, stay tuned for that. But today, right now, we have a on-the-road twisty in my backyard kind of review uh, and this is going to be a long term i've been on this bike for a couple hundred miles i'm good and comfortable guys so let's take a look around the bike see how absolutely gorgeous this thing is and then let's get out on the back roads here at berryessa and see what this thing can really do So funny little story. Um, I'm taking some of the B-roll shots for the for the bike, and uh, the gentleman comes over. He owns the land, and uh, he uh, his house is the property across the way, and he owns this little chunk of land. And uh, he thought I was with the fire department. He saw the red on the tank, and he saw my reflective, and he thought, oh shoot, the burn pile. And so he came over, but he was nice enough. I said, hey, I come out here. Is it okay that I'm out here? And he said, absolutely. So uh, that was mighty nice of him. So let's get on this thing and let's get into the back roads. Woo! Ah. It's the only thing with this big heavy bike getting it off the center stand is a little pain in the butt. But um, real quick, I just want to go over a few things before we get on the main road. Um, we've got a lot of videos coming for you guys on the Multistrada. Uh, one being a very in depth on the TFT display. So I real quick just want to kind of go over the controls and we're going to be on the street. We've got some enduro videos so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But I just want to give you guys a quick rundown of the handlebars and the instrument clusters. Uh, we got our heated hand grips. Hand grips, heated hand grips are a uh, standard on the enduro version model on off and then our power on and then we have our key power down here just FYI which uh, I'm going to also show you guys a, a cool feature with that where if you guys do lose your key you can actually still get on your bike so very cool so stay tuned for the instrument cluster review um, over here we've got our high beam flasher and then on and off hazards obviously uh, and then we've got our uh, fog lights if it, it was equipped with fog lights it does not have fog lights so uh, our cruise control on and off set resume we're not going to be using that today and then we have our menu and mode button along with our turn signals and horn down below now I want to go over real quick just quickly about what I've done for the menu so if you look on the TFT you'll see that on the left we're scrolling through our tripometer uh, our time we've uh, by the way I've I've been on this uh, 50 more miles than that so almost 250 miles I've been on the bike and and I've just been having a blast on it um, our time uh, three minutes and or three hours and 27 average miles per hour and blah 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 so down to menu and then TFT again we're going to go over that but we have it set up in sport mode we're going to keep it in sport mode single rider no baggage although I've got a little bit of baggage I'm going to keep it to a minimum there so if we push and hold the menu over it's going to take us into our mode settings okay and then it's all preset these are your presets so these are sport touring urban enduro and then exit so we're in sport so we're going to keep it in sport but if you just click in the menu click it over to menu and you go into menu again riding modes and then sport and then engine we have the full capability of giving it full power in dynamic mode okay or 
medium or low okay and then uh, our dynamic traction control we're able to be in road and or wet or performance okay so i've got it in three right now um and then back and then uh, our abs we know what that is i mean i really control i turned it down we're in performance so i might get the wheel off a little bit um and then we've got our ducati quick shifter you can turn it on or off so that's kind of nice um we've got it on we're just going to keep it on but here's what i really wanted to show you guys the suspension and we've got the suspension on hard for the front and then you can change to have harder in the rear or you can go more comfort or more performance so stay tuned for this so i have this is all my custom settings so um, i've kind of gone in and changed all this and then of course your load mode we're in single right so and then you can adjust that that height so if you want it up more or you want it you know or lower or you want it higher so um and then it would adjust you can hear it buzz a teeny bit so uh again just stay tuned stay tuned for the um in-depth cluster review because it's it's going to probably be a 20 minute review to kind of go through everything but i just kind of wanted to show you guys where i'm set up also just so you guys know i've changed the display to night display if you guys are wondering why it's kind of in that low contrast i really like it better than that white look it just it's a personal preference right so get this thing started up And uh, it just sounds absolutely amazing. And uh, I, I love the way it sounds. I've uh, been riding real well. We'll get into some t statistics, um, but you'll have to bear with me a little bit um, because uh, well, we're gonna be off-road, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to jam on this thing a little bit and give you guys a little multi-strata experience. So um, 158 horsepower, 90, uh, 94 pound-feet of torque. So pretty good and torquey and great great horsepower and uh i will say the the first gear shift is a little bit clunky and that is because and ducati's made it very clear is because of the uh um the quick the first gear is a little bit higher on the enduro model now the enduro model you wouldn't generally be out here on the twisties necessary necessarily excuse me um because you're generally you're going to be more on off-road and stuff like that so uh the enduro model is raked out a little bit more the forks are, are kind of forward a little bit more and uh bigger front wheel so uh it's it's definitely not helping us any in the twisties because it's a little bit harder to turn okay but um Everything else is a little bit higher. Your foot pegs are a little bit higher. Your bars are a little bit higher. And this is for you to stand. Now, I'm 6'2", and I can tell you right now, I, so I'm, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm pretty, my arms are pretty well down to my side. So very comfortable. I mean, I don't feel uncomfortable standing in that position. Uh, it's uncomfortable for me just because I'm usually not used to that style. But um, that's how Ducati has designed the Enduro and how Enduro should be designed, to, to, to speak the truth, right? Because that's where it's designed for. Now, if you guys are generally, if you guys are looking and wondering what the differences are between the Enduro to, say, uh, the Grand Tour and the S and the Pikes Peak, BMW has done an amazing, or excuse me, Ducati, uh, I was going to say BMW uh, in a second. You'll hear what I'm going to say about BMW. But uh, Ducati's done a very, very good job with taking one bike and taking that lineup all the way from an adventure bike to an adventure sport bike to an adventure Grand Tour bike to an adventure like sport bike. And uh, BMW has two lines of motorcycles that fall into that category so the bmw you have the gs model the gs adventure and then the gs regular which is basically the enduro adventure and then you have the kind of the um the uh, grand tour style which is just a ba basic uh gs and then you're, you're and then the grand and then the s would be just kind of like the the basic sport gs but where Ducati is, is kind of shines a little bit different is they still keep the Multistrada line in the uh, the 1260 with the Pikes Peak 
as their uh, basically BMW S 1000 XR. So it's they've taken they've taken one bike and just uh, taken it across multiple platforms. Now, what was surprising as I did a little bit of research about the three different versions and models and whatnot is um, they don't detune any of the the uh, uh, motors at all. So the Pikes Peak and the Enduro, so exact opposites of the spectrum, are um, have the same horsepower and same torque. Obviously suspension and handling and wheels and everything is a little bit different, but um, but the motor and, and, and the, the frame itself, the newer style frame, is the same within the within them but when you get into the front end and you get into the suspension and you get into the wheels and the bars the tank i'm going to talk about the tank in a second but th that's what changes everything through the multi-strata brand so um so it, it, congrats ducati because you guys did a very fine job on this multi-strata 1260 now it is the 1260 it's the newer motor um, so i do want to talk about the dvt uh the desmo valve timing and because ducati's done a very very good job to take this bike and to be able to go in six gear at a low rpm and be able to work that torque let's get around this corner work that torque to take me up into my horsepower where i need to be now you're asking why i'm using the clutch and i've got the quick shifter um when i'm on the back roads i just i'm, I'm quicker to kind of do that than it, it just it's just my thing so i'll try not to but um So the DBT system and how it works is, and, and I'm no mechanic, so I'm no like super engineer, but I do want to say that when when uh, Alex was describing it to me, it's like the valves, they, they stay open and close at certain times to give us more power and more torque and to keep the torque and power curve so manageable. Now, when we say why and how is it different, and he explained it to me like VTEC, okay? We all know VTEC and when the VTEC kicks in it's like bam it's right there right and then it falls off the thing with the ducati is this is why ducati is so great in moto gp down the street is because when it kicks on it stays on and it stays all the way through the horsepower so the dvt system is is super rad and that that follows through all of the whole line all four models so uh, and and it's also in the Diablo, uh, which is which is also the 1260 um, motor. So it's kind of being recycled. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about kind of uh, the the possibilities of what may be possibly going on with the Multistrada. It, it, well, it's not even a possibility because it has been released. Claudio has said that it is going to be happening. Um, the V4 motor is coming to a multi-strata now when i talked to the guys over at ans they said look the enduro is probably going to continue to stick with the 1260 but like the pikes peak and the uh and the uh s will most likely get the new v4 motor and uh the the uh, grand tour and the uh, enduro will probably continue with the 1260 so it'll be interesting to find out now we're going to be at the ready for red event on tuesday and i get such a pleasure to be able to do an interview uh with jason the ceo of ducati north america and um i, I got i got the question for him guys so um hopefully i can get a little bit more out of them but you know the v4 line is grown uh you guys have seen and have heard obviously about the v4 street fighter i saw it at ducati north america the other day absolutely gorgeous it might be my next bike so stay tuned um i'm really into the barred bikes so stay tuned for that but let's get uh let's get into the ride a little bit and a couple twisties here and we're gonna stop up here at the dam but just to kind of give you guys uh a little back road feel <laughs> it's got it guys it's got it
Here's that timing. So you get that torque curve up. Woo, yeah, baby. Oh, man. Well, let's get over here. We're at Lake Berryessa. Let's park this thing where it belongs. So, guys, the Multistrada Enduro, um, I'm hoping to be able to have a long relationship with Ducati. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you guys uh, some more content on the Multistratas and the 1260s. I've yet to be on a 900 style. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm excited to be. But um, we've got some tour reviews. Again, make sure you guys stay tuned for that instrument cluster review. And uh, we'll be at the Ready for Red. But I know you guys really want to know where this bike should be. And that's here in the dirt. Uh, my buddy, uh, Kerry Simpson, he's going to be taking me out. And we're going to be doing some enduro riding on Thursday. So stay tuned. We'll link that in, uh, in the uh, above link. But uh, Ducati's 1260, brand new. Well, it's not brand new. Last year's model. Uh, uh, but 2020, uh, 1260 enduro oh i also wanted to tell you guys eight gallon tank that's another big deal four more gallons of fuel in this thing that's why you guys see this thing is such a beefcake such a beefcake but absolutely gorgeous so uh thank you guys for a quick ride and a quick little review um I, a thumbs up on this thing if if i was a little bit more into dirt this would be the uh the bike that i would go with and uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave me a comment down below. If there's some stuff that I missed, please uh, share. If there's, uh, if you guys have one of these, let us know what you guys think. Um, we are very active in the comments, so we really enjoy um, hearing what you guys have to say about our reviews. So thank you guys for sticking around. Please hit that like button. And of course, smack that subscribe button down below. <sighs> and enjoy the view. Lake Berryessa here in Solano County and the Multistrada. All right, guys, we'll see you next video.